Candice Marley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Thursday, September 12th. So today we have the moon in Capricorn all day. And of course, this is going to provide us a lot of realistic, serious, somber emotions where we are kind of getting real with ourselves. We're focused on our to-do list. We have a want, need, and desire to be productive in a certain sense. And the moon in Capricorn allows us to kind of keep ourselves busy with the outside world, with our to-do list, with the plans that we need to be thinking about so that we don't find ourselves in this negative narrative, this cynical inner dialogue where we're picking things apart. Of course, that's definitely a possibility. Negative Nancy, Betty the Bully, all the mean girls do tend to come out to play when the moon is in Capricorn. But we do have some positive energies really helping us to refine the goal to refine the vision for us to have a realistic approach to what it is that we have power and control over in this present moment that we can actually do to align with that greater grander goal vision and dream and so there is this let's call it presence we are very much in our physical body we are very aware of our physical environment we are very aware of the physical circumstances that are again asking us to do something about it we are in virgo season this is a time of adjustment and improvement and there is this element where again we are trying to get the vision clear the Capricorn energy is the manifesting energy of the Zodiac, but we have to be realistic in what we can actually achieve, actually obtain. So we are definitely going to refine that goal, vision, and dream as we get going here today with nine different aspects popping off and six of them involving the moon. We're definitely going to have a more realistic approach to the plans, to the strategy that we definitely have to start piecing together. The moon in Capricorn energy going to make a positive interaction with Uranus, the great awakener who is retrograde in this Taurus energy. So this gives us earth on earth action, thus why we're present, why we're aware of our physical body, why we're aware of our physical environment, why we're aware of our physical circumstances, both where it is that we have the option to have power and control to take action to make moves and where limitations are preventing us from doing just that. Of course, reminder, Uranus's whole point in a retrograde in this Taurus energy is to illuminate where it is that we are essentially holding on to physical matters, people, places, and things that we've outgrown, that are essentially stunting our growth, holding us back, preventing the progress that we've been praying for. And essentially through Uranus's retrograde, not only will we become illuminated, to where these particular aspects are alive and well, but we're actually able to do something about it. And so the moon interacting with Uranus is going to give us a shift in our perspective, a shift in our mood, in our attitude to take a good look at the structures, the foundations of our physical realm, figure out who and what needs to stay, needs to go, and then readjust, refine our ultimate goal, vision, and dream based on what we actually have determined again, is dead weight and needs to be released. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Saturn. So Saturn rolls over this Capricorn energy. So we know that this is going to be intense. Saturn being the Lord of Karma, ruling over roles, responsibilities, systems, structures, foundations, willpower, discipline. He is also retrograde, but in Pisces energy, again, wrapping up a 30 year cycle, wrapping up the old, wrapping up the debris, of the deconstruction renovation process that we've been going through, realizing where the old version of ourselves had built certain, let's call them aspects in our physical realm that now we're no longer in alignment with. This again has everything to do stemming from the shift in our belief systems, stemming from what it is that this new version of self wants, needs, and desires. Again, Saturn's retrograde in Pisces is the inner realm renovation the inner realm reconstruction of discipline, of willpower that we need before we're going to be gifted with the opportunity to actually remove and release a lot of these physical aspects out of the physical realm. And so the moon interacting with Saturn, of course, gives us a reality check, but in the best kind of ways, gives us that serious perspective of taking a good look at what needs to end, what needs to die in order for us to have the space to clear the slate, for us to build towards something new, for something new to be brought to life, for something new to grow. And 
And so this is going to, again, just help us kind of refine where our roles and responsibilities actually are, where we're still needing to honor our commitments and where we've outgrown certain roles and responsibilities and how we're going to wrap those particular life chapters up. The sun in Virgo energy going to get into the boxing ring, square off with Jupiter. Jupiter is the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, blessings. He is in Gemini energy. We're on the fence about a lot of things. We're trying to expand our thoughts, our ideas, our inner dialogue. We're trying to decide on new options, new opportunities, new paths, new directions to take. But of course, the back and forth being on the fence, this is a good idea, no it's not, I feel in alignment with this, no I don't, the back and forth is getting to be a little bit much. And here's the thing, Virgo energy, Gemini energy, what do they have in common? Well, Mercury rules over both of them. Mercury just cleared his post retrograde shadow period here yesterday under the influence of the first quarter moon in Sag. And so we have this clash a square always highlights the growing pains that we're currently going through. So let's just say that Jupiter is going to magnify our emotional state, which at this particular point in time is going to be a little bit extra, a little bit dramatic. OK, we we're over exaggerating our emotions. We're over exaggerating our situation and circumstances definitely feels real to us, but is a little bit more magnified than it actually needs to be. And so this is going to kind of trigger our, let's call it, ability to see how optimistic we actually are, whether we're rooted in optimism, hopes, wishes, and dreams, or we're rooted in logic, practicality, and rationality. There is going to be a fluctuation to our mood, to our attitude, to our state of mind. Our state of mind is a very fragile state at this particular point. We are overthinking. We are over-emoting. We are over-exaggerating where it is that we're currently at, the limitations that we're currently facing, the pretty much the world just seems worse than it actually is. Now it feels very real. So don't, don't let, you know, don't get jaded in thinking that it's all in your head. You're definitely feeling this intensity. What I'm saying is, is that at this particular point in time with this energy, it's almost like you have to treat it like the side mirror of your vehicle where it says, you know, objects may appear closer than they actually are. Well, under this influence, emotions, thoughts, circumstances seem way more over exaggerated, way more intense, way more crucial than they actually are. This is definitely not going to feel good. It is going to put us in a restless state. It is going to have us kind of looking for the truth, looking for the purpose, looking for the answers. We're definitely going to feel that particular struggle. Now, keep in mind, this square energy is to help us grow. We only grow when we feel uncomfortable. We only grow when our back is against a wall. And so we need this particular conflict, tension point, over exaggeration of our emotions, of our headspace, of circumstances to make us feel like we're trapped so that we boss up and are willing to make a change. This is helping our personal growth. This is helping to refine our inspiration, our motivation, our excitement. We want to move on. We want to make changes. We don't know what the answer is right now. Again, thank you, Gemini Energy, for having us on the fence. At the end of the day, please do not commit to yourself to anything under this energy, meaning we overestimate our abilities. We overestimate our time. We overestimate our energy levels. We overestimate the actual outcome. Again, everything appears bigger, larger, more extreme than it actually is. So again, you know that saying like, go big or go home. No, we want we want to make sure that we're not going big because home is the last place that we want to find ourselves crying in a corner of disappointment because we over exaggerate over exaggerated a particular outcome that, of course, is going to set us up for disappointment. We do not want to do that. We want to be patient. We want to wait. We want to calm ourselves down. We want to have a realistic approach. We don't want to make a decision, a choice point, a path or direction option without, again, feeling confident about it. We don't want to feel pressurized to do just that. So we're definitely going to have to slow our roll with this particular energy. And coming out of this particular interaction, just moments later, we have the moon in Capricorn energy directly opposing, sitting across from Mars. Mars is the god of war. 
ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger. He's in cancer energy. Capricorn and cancer energy sit across from each other. They represent the axis of safety, security, and stability. Here's the thing. The Capricorn energy focuses in on where we'd like to go and how we plan on getting there and what we want to achieve on our way of actually achieving the greater, grander goal. The Cancer energy is where we're coming from. And right now, Mars and this Cancer energy, we are hunkered down. We actually don't want to move forward. The only moves that we're willing to make with Mr. Mars in Cancer is moves that would ensure our safety, our security, our stability. And setting off into a new path, into a new direction, you know, really bossing up and putting ourselves in foreign territory is scary as F right now to Mr. Mars in this Cancer energy. There is a certain disposition where preservation is the safest bet until clarity comes, until we feel a little bit more solid, a little bit more comfortable where, where this path is going to lead us. And so this opposition is definitely going to intensify that sun square Jupiter aspect that, of course, is very uncomfortable to help our personal growth. This is going to show us where it is emotionally. There's a part of us that wants to kind of get up and go, wants to move on, wants to move forward, even though the plan isn't clear yet. And where part of us is resisting making these changes at all costs, because, again, we don't know what kind of awaits us out there in foreign territory. We know damn well what we're going to get in this present moment even though it's tried, tested, true, and familiar and semi-uncomfortable because we've outgrown it, this is the safest bet. And so this is going to highlight for us where it is that we have to strike a better balance in between, yes, preserving, fighting, defending, protecting what it is that we've already built, finding emotional satisfaction and safety, security, and stability in this present moment while emotionally and mentally we build the vision, the goal, the dream inside of us without pressurizing ourselves to take action to make moves upon it. The moon in Capricorn then going to trine beautiful interaction with Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, who is now free and clear of his post shadow period. He is in his rulership in Virgo energy. This is earth on earth action. The moon is our heart space. Mercury is our head space. They are working together for a common goal. What is this common goal? You may ask. Well, the common goal is right now identifying where adjustments, improvements, changes and transformations actually need to be had, need to be made here in this physical realm. Again, reminder, we're in a closure chapter. We are wrapping things up, karmically speaking. And so we do have to expect that we're taking a good look at our physical realm, not to see where it is that we can move on and dive into something new, but where it is that we can wrap up the old for good so that we can actually clear the space and clean the slate for us to start building towards something new when the universe actually provides us with that particular energy. Mars, the god of war, ruling over the physical energy, drive, passion, desire, even anger in this cancer energy, going to make a positive interaction with Chiron, the wounded healer, who is retrograde in Aries energy. So Chiron's retrograde in Aries energy is helping us to identify the problems within us, either emotionally, mentally, spiritually, physically, circumstance in our physical realms. We are understanding where it is that this new version of self operating from the new level of wants, needs, and desires, a new level level of perception of self, we are identifying the areas of the old version of self that we're still struggling to kind of put behind us. Because Mars is rearing to go, again, in this Cancer energy, the only actions that we are currently able to make are things that are going to provide us with the safety, security, the stability, the protection that we feel we need right now in our emotional realm. It is definitely going to get choppy as we kind of get gain closer proximity um, to this eclipse energy and the equinox energy. And so Mars at this point, he's just willing to do whatever is going to make him feel safe and comfortable in this present moment. Mars interacting with Chiron is us having a new level of awareness where it is that we're giving ourselves permission to kind of hunker down in this present moment, if you will, and not to be so forceful with pushing this agenda of where are we going to go? What do we need to choose? What do we need to do? What do we have to build? What do we have to create? None of that. It's just kind of like, okay, I'm realizing that I'm having a lot of fears, doubts, and insecurities about the very vague plan that I do have to move on. So instead of pushing me into that particular juncture, what can I do in this present moment to make my myself feel better, to make myself feel a little bit more stable? And so, you know, that's a, a good thing because we're essentially... 
identifying where it is that we need to heal, where it is that we need to grow, where it is that we need to, yes, just continue this process of building ourselves up until we're given an opportunity to actually take action and make moves to initiate a new path. Again, we're wrapping things up. We're not necessarily, you know, initiating these new structures, these new foundations for us to move on and move forward. The moon and Capricorn then going to get into the boxing ring square off with the North Node and Aries energy. So again, growing pains. This is our inability to see clearly the steps, the structure, the system that has to be implemented in order for us to actually end up on the path that our higher self needs us to be on. Again, we're in a closure state. So thinking about the future is scary as F right now. It's very vague. We don't have the vision. We don't have the information. We don't have the clarity. We don't have the insights that we would hope to have in order to make an informed decision on where we're making some major life moves. So there's a hesitancy there to think about the future. What we do want to think about is where we can wrap up the past. Again, an ending, closure, completion phase. The moon is then going to make an awkward interaction with Uranus. So we started the day off with Mr. Uranus. It was a much more positive vibe. Right now, we are kind of stepping back. We're acting as the observer to see where it is, again, that we're holding on to the old. Again, where it is that there is room for improvement, adjustments, changes, and transformations to the existing structure of our lives to the existing routines, relationships, financial situations, long-term goals that we once had that we no longer have because the new version of self doesn't resonate. Again, this is allowing us to see from a higher perspective, acting as the observer, where it is that we're essentially blocking ourselves. Okay, so we don't have the kind of insight, the details that we want on how to move forward. Okay, fine. How about we take a good look at our present moment, what we could do differently in order to create a different result. And maybe we could even look back to see where it is that, again, we're carrying some dead weight. The last thing that we have going on here today is Mercury now full steam ahead in Virgo energy, his rulership, making a positive interaction with Pluto, the great transformer who was retrograde in this Capricorn energy. So again, Earth on Earth action. Now, if you've been listening to me for any amount of time, you know that we love Virgo energy and Plutonian energy working together. Plutonian energy does a deep dive in the deepest part of our psyche. That's where the programming, the conditioning, the seeds, if you will, got planted in our early childhood development that has our egoic programming in a self-sabotaging, self-destruct mode. We have to come aware of the problem in order to fix it. That's Virgo's whole vibe. We have to identify the problem in order to fix it. We have to be aware of our fears, of our doubts, of our insecurities, of our vulnerabilities in order for us to flip the script and empower ourselves in a much stronger way. This particular interaction not only is going to have us kind of realizing where it is that the inner shift of our mental plane, our perspective, our inner dialogue or narrative has to change but we could also see from our external realm where details are starting to flood in, insight starting to flood in, hidden layers of a truth that we've been struggling to accept start to roll in. This is a major intensity of the mental plane. It is understanding very clearly where we have to have aha moments. We have to have epiphanies to, again, realize the issue, realize the problem in order for us to do something about it. And again, we're in an ending phase, a closure phase, a completion phase. We are just missing a few of those finer details in order to wrap up a certain situation, circumstance and scenario in our head that hasn't made sense up until this particular point.